Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here with another one of these old cloudy day videos. Yep, you're looking at Shadow Man, which means that the sun is popping out, and this may be one of the last videos we get to put out on this format. We'll jump back over on the you know, old computer there and put uh, text and Bible scriptures up there for you guys to look at so you can... Um, uh, follow along in the scriptures as we, as we give these classes. But we're going to take advantage of this one here since it's late in the day and we won't be able to, to produce one with the computer for tomorrow anyway. We'll go ahead and put one out. Um, maybe this is the last one. Maybe it's not. But this one is going to be on the mark of the beast. And the question is, is it possible that this coronavirus that's taking over the world now, this pandemic that's, you know, running rampant through the United States and the rest of the world, is it possible that it could have something to do with the mark of the beast? Now, my, my answer is yes, and I'm going to give you some reasons why I think that is. Now, <clears throat> one of the things before we jump into it deeply, we have to understand what the beast is. If we want to talk about the mark of the beast, we have to know, well, who is the beast? What is the beast? And for that, you would have to go in and look at the book of Daniel. Daniel is who tells us, first of all, who the beast is. Now, we've come here and now thinking when we hear the word beast, is this uh, something really scary? Whereas in Daniel and in other parts of the Bible, the word beast just means animal. That's all it means is is an animal any animal you can refer to as a beast for whether it be a cow or a horse or a dog or anything like that and what Daniel is talking about when he talks about the uh, beast is is how he he in in his visions he was given dreams him and Nebuchadnezzar and some other people were given visions and dreams back then and the government systems were portrayed as beasts in one point, they were portrayed as a lioness, and another point, there was a ram, and then it was a goat, and you know, I believe it was a bear at some point, described as different animals. But the point is, is that when we talk about beasts, and when we get to Revelations and we hear the word beast, what that is referring to is our kingdoms, our governments, those people who run this world are considered the beasts. So when you think of the mark of the beast, what you're thinking about is the mark of the government in some way now before i go further i want to point out the fact that there are many people out here who are studying what the mark of the beast is there are a lot of people who are who are doing a lot of research and you have to give these guys credit because they're spending a lot of time and resources trying to come up with this information for us and you know a lot of time we take them for granted you know and especially when they don't quite get things right but you know we we still can get information out of what they talk about and you know a couple of there's a couple of camps out there as far as what the mark of the beast is now the first camp is when, when you think about the mark of the beast is the, the, uh, how the government systems, particularly the uh, papal government systems, is changing the calendar and changing the feast days and even changing the Sabbath day. Now, just to briefly talk on that, the reason why they're making the connection between the, um, the, the changing of the Sabbath day and changing of the feast days as the mark of the beast is because when you look in books like Deuteronomy and other places, Exodus and other places, it describes the Sabbath day and the feast days, particularly unleavened bread, as the mark of the Father. And so, or the sign of the Father, or the token given to the Father. And so it's pretty easy to see how they make a connection that, okay, if the if the feast days and the Sabbath days is the mark of the Father, then, then changing those and doing them on different days or not keeping those would be the mark of the beast. So, after you finish this video and you do your research on the mark of the beast, go ahead and check out those guys because that is a very legitimate argument what they're making there. But in this one, we're going to focus more on the material manifestation of what the mark of the beast is. Now, in that camp, they believe it has something to do with the modern technologies. Um, there's three of them that, you know, 
that they tend that people are starting to realize could line up to be the mark of the beast. The one is Bitcoin and all of these cryptocurrencies and how the world is changing over to cryptocurrency. And the reason why they're doing that, they're talking about that one is because of the whole buying and selling aspect of of the mark of the beast. If we all change over to cryptocurrency, it will be just like money now, just like cash now. You can't buy or sell without a dollar bill here in the United States. Well, if we all switch over to Bitcoin, it will be the same way. Now, what they're adding to that, though, is the RFID chips in the hand. That's where they're getting this thing about putting the, um, the mark in the hand and in the forehead. Um, um, but you understand that, you know, now people, there's a lot of people around the world who are getting these RFID chips and they're not putting together that it could be related to the mark of the beast because it has nothing to do with buying and selling. Well, of course, if we go to Bitcoin or something like that, where, you know, you have to have computers in order to run that stuff, they're going to somehow tie it into a computer that's already under your skin anyway. And then you add that to the, um... 5G technology. When you put the 5G technology together with the other two, it kind of paints a picture of how these bankers, these governments, these B systems, if they ever get those three in place where you have um, a chip under your hand that's ran by 5G technology with your Bitcoin information in it, you can very well see how that's going to be preventing you from buying or selling or doing, you know, just about anything, you know, in, 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 in the economic systems of the world. The the governments will be able to, to control us, track us, and, you know, even a lot of other things when you get into, you know, some of that 5G technology and RFID and stuff and what they what they plan to do there. But you say, well, what? how can this coronavirus, how can it actually promote that? How can this coronavirus bring all of that into effect? Well, you think about um, what what's going on with this coronavirus and how it's... Um, it's bringing out our dependencies on the government system. There's a lot of people who are going hungry. There's a lot of people who are out of work. There's a lot of people who are having to depend on the government system way more than we did even a year ago now that we're in this pandemic and people are having to stay home and not be able to go to work, not be able to, to go to school and different stuff. We're starting to realize um, how dependent we are on the system and that dependency seems to be growing every day. We're becoming more dependent on um, the beast system every day. You think of the beast, the government system, as everything to do with civilization um, is, is by way of, of the government systems. You can't name any place in the world that has things like running water or security or education without there being some type of government attached to it. And that's, that's, that's where... That's that's what's going on. That's why, you know, we, we are being so dependent on the government for those things. But the thing about this this pandemic, you know, it's it's bringing out those dependencies and making us more dependent on those government systems. So I think it's easy to see how, you know, as we get further along, there's more people out of work. Um, the virus spreads or whatever. You can see how big government agencies like FEMA will start to gain more and more control. Um, maybe even the military by way of the National Guard will start to get more and more control on us. And then if we ever have to depend on FEMA and FEMA camps to take care of us, well, of course, we're going to have to obey and listen to what they say do. And if they tell us that we're going to have to get a microchip or something like that under our hands in order to eat, then, you know, there's a lot of people that's going to line up to get that kind of stuff um you know um they're they're they're, they're not going to hesitate to go ahead and get um whatever it is that's required of them to get in order to feed their children um when you when you take food off the table and get people hungry a lot of things that you know they seem to be important to them in their life is it, it kind of goes away they, they change their perspective on things when it, when people start to get hungry it kind of changes the way we act or whatever and so you know I believe with that we can see how it is that, you know, 
this coronavirus could actually cause us to head in that direction all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up um like i said this is one of our cloudy day videos if we get you know um some feedback on it we may go ahead and you know do some type of follow-up video on this where we'll add verses to what we're talking about and that kind of thing so go ahead and hit the like button if you got something out of this hit the dislike button if you didn't but leave us a comment either way and shalom